All right, we're going to get into episode 12 of Solar Champion. Last game, I'm sure as you guys saw, was not great. Cut my win-loss in half, my KD went down. Um, this game, we're hoping to get back into it. I want to keep a decently high win-loss, especially for a solo queue. I feel like if I can get the champion with like a five win-loss on a solo queue, that would be really good. So we're just under a five win-loss right now. Hopefully, we can turn it around. That loss was not great, but I have not been playing like both cafe games I played for this series has not been good for me. Um, hopefully we don't get cafe. Get me a map I can frag out on so I can kind of, you know, carry do my thing. And one such map is chalet. I need to see some chalet. I need to see bank. I need to see night haven labs. I need to see one of those types of maps where I can be just be a weirdo and get kills on. I'm going to be back when the game starts. All right, I'm back. Um, we get bank. We get one of the maps I was talking about. Okay, so bank is my best map. This personally, this is my best map. Now, um, the reason I'm so like I like bank a lot is it's a lot of open gunfights, right? Like I take from lobby pretty much every single time. There's a bunch of areas to clear, but they have to stand in the open. Like they, there's no defender sided advantage. At least when you're an attacker, right? Because you guys are both going to be in the open. For me personally, I have good drone work, good like awareness. So I know where to pre aim, where to look, where to pre fire. And I this is one of my better maps. Now that being said, I'm probably gonna jinx it. Because I'm talking all, you know, like I'm good or something. I'm fucking shitty and washed up. But hopefully, this is my Silver 4 rank up. Um and yeah. We go from here. Now I'm gonna be talking, explaining how I do my bank pushes because I know a lot of people do not like bank. Um, I know it's not one of their favorite maps, but it is my favorite map, and I, I'm, I'm gonna explain why. If you have good aim, you will literally never lose on bank, or, or I shouldn't say that. You won't go negative on bank, right? Like, and when I say not negative, you'll have like a 2.0 plus KD on bank every single time if you know how to play it, and. I'm going to start off by doing this lobby drone. This lobby drone is super good. If you're not using this, you're using it incorrectly. Like, this lobby drone, you can see everything. But what I like to do is I just jump my drone off the back so that there's no chance of it getting shot in prep phase. We know where the bomb is. My teammate might be on three and a half thousand ping, but, you know, we move. Um, so I'm just going to hide my drone, and I'm going to use this like a uh, default camera that the defense has. Now, with this drone, I can also hear if anybody's hiding in ATMs, which is this area right here. If somebody's hiding in ATMs, you want to instantly bust down the door, run through, and pre-fire them. Because they're not expecting that, right? Like, they're trying to make a rap play, they're trying to do some weird-ass shit, and they're not expecting you to just run through and shit on them. My teammate's gonna spawn, get spawn peak to half HP, which is why I never spawn over there. There's like 17 windows you have to worry about. Not worth it, in my opinion. Let's break down this door. Let me quickly check ATMs. Nobody's in here. And I'm going to hop my drone up. So from here, I can see so much. Right? Like, I can see part of top elevator. And I see that there's somebody top elevator. Let me see if I can get an angle on him. I can't quite get an angle on him. But my teammate's repelled in skylight. He's going to make some noise for me. Now, I have a shield behind me. I can hear him. So I'm assuming that this guy is going to try to make a play. Okay. Top elevator gets my teammate, and I'm just going to walk behind my shield. We're up 4v2 man advantage. My shield's walking side side. I'm going to walk hall side. Oh, I didn't know there was one stalks. This guy is lagging like... Missing the flash is not good. Down to one friendly. And we just sell around that we should have easily won. Sure, this guy can still win it, but it is going to be significantly harder to win it now. Okay. He's going to get the plant down, which I think is okay. Now, I'm curious to see what he does. We get the ping on the first guy. Nice. And he knows Solus was below. So he can play the repel. Now, this is a very good post plant spot. 
I think the plant spot was a little bit sketchy. Not ideal plant spot. But we have lobby cam, so we can see if he's going to run out. And the guy runs out, but I don't think he has time to defuse now. I think we win the round. So, big ant 70. I don't know. If I'm him, I'm never making that play. Running out with half the defuse timer. Um, it's just too risky. Like, you could just bait the defuse, and at least you have a chance to win. Like, sure, he got the kill, but he has absolutely no chance to win that round. So, I don't know. If I'm him, I would just never, never make that play. But it is what it is. Um, Glory Dogs, it, our, uh, our Blitz player, it seems like he lagged out of the game. Guy was on like 4,000 ping, so it's probably his rider. Oh, never mind. He's back. So let me see. Let me see. I'm probably going to record two or three episodes in this session. If I play poorly on this game as well, I'm going to just probably call it. Because, you know, some days it's just not a siege day. And I do not want to chalk the stats on this account. I want to hit, you know, I want to prove that you can hit solo queue to champion with good stats, right? Like, one of my buddies solo queues to champion. And he gets there with, like, 12 win loss, 2.6 KD. And people don't believe that he solo queues, but he really does solo queue. Like, that's his solo queue account, and he gets there. It was champion in rank 1.0, so it's not like he's boosting like crazy. You can rank up really well when you're solo queuing. Um... Because there's so much you can do as a solo queue player. Like, you have to assume that your teammates are playing together. That's what I do, at least. So you have to try to make plays. You can't really play too passive. You have to let your teammates kind of play passive. And you have to try to be the ones making plays, making openings for your team. So now they're the same bomb set again. I'm going to do the same push. This time, I'm just not going to push the hallway. Um, because I just wasn't aware that there was a Sox player. And to be honest, I never really pushed the hallway. But I never have a blitz pushing with me either, so um, I just walk towards that long hallway on the left-hand side with the two double windows. I just walk through there usually, and I get some picks on that side of the map because, well, people don't expect an attacker to be up there. So now we see we see there's somebody in elevator, top elevator. I'm going to join at close because our blitz walked through here last time, so I'm expecting somebody to um, try to counter that. And I see the lesion. I'm going to get close up on this door. Redrun again. And I know he's somewhere like over here. He's gonna run away. And that's that's not good. I don't wanna deal with that lesion right now. Alright, okay, so we had the first two picks. I know somebody is still in the elevator. I'm going to go below. Okay, so he has bottom elevator shot out. I was gonna try to see if I can kill him through the hatch. But that's no longer an option because well, he can see me. So I get the dock. I know Legion's sight sight me. That's wrong. I think he's in meeting room, if I had to guess. And my teammate not there. So sick shaky shots. Well we get it done. We're now up two to nothing. And we're gonna go I'm assuming they're gonna go basement. So for my basement push, I do a bit of a weird push. Um it's not it's not good to do with multiple people. You should only ever have at most one person pushing garage. And the reason for that is you're going to push through a bottleneck, like a funnel, right? You have to walk through the doorways. And they can hold a bunch of angles. But if nobody is focused on garage, I'm going to get a bunch of kills. I'm going to be able to cut, like hold the crosses so that they can't walk in between the sites. And I'm going to be able... To help my teammates plant. Like, I know it sounds kind of selfish that I said I'm going to get a bunch of kills. But me getting kills here is actually my job. Th that's like that's like my utility, right? So I have four teammates going to the front. For that, I'm assuming that they're going to do a blue push. They're going to try to get a plant down. And this is perfect. Because I'm going to walk through garage. They're going to be in red hole trying to nitro cell my teammates. And I'm going to shoot them while they have their nitro cells out. That way, my teammates don't get nitro cell. I get a free pick. And... We're just going to work one step closer to winning the round. Now they have a Cade, right? So that's one Nitro Cell. So Mice or Rooney. So at most they have three Nitro Cells. So I'm thinking, how can I get in? How can I help my teammates plant? But I'm going to time it correctly. I don't want to rush. I want to walk in when my teammates are just about to plant, right? Like I want the other team 
to be aware that they're planting, so they're getting ready to night yourself. Now, I know it seems like, like, how do I know that? You got, you just got to use your drones. Like, you got to figure out, look at your outline, see that your teammates are getting close to sight. Oh, they're about to execute. You can see these people setting up for nitro cells. Okay, I'm just going to walk in and take this base. So I'm going to get to this first garage black car. I'm just going to crouch back here and then drone out the garage. Now I see that right side is clear. Back red is clear. I see that they have an alibi. So I know that at most now they have two nitro cells. I'm going to push up and take the back red car from this position i'm in a really really good spot now that is not good our thermite dies but he does get refragged the thermite is necessary necessary for this take so this maestro is kind of lacking right here i don't think he knows i'm here he's gonna get on his cams and then i'm just gonna take the space i'm gonna take the room gate damage it doesn't matter and they had they just had a setup and i wasn't expecting them to be there because i just you know I didn't drone correctly. I saw a kill and I got greedy for it, which is just a bad plan on my part. But to be completely honest, I have never seen anybody play where that Aruni was playing. If they're playing in that site, usually they're deeper back by the window, not like on the actual lockers. But like I said, that is on me. Proper drone work is, or I did not have proper drone work. But what can you do? Um, I still think we're in a good spot to win this. We're up 3-1 on a bank after the attacking half. I'm going to pause up when our defense round starts. All right, I'm back. Um, we, we came top floor first. Honestly, all the bomb sites on bank are pretty good. I personally think that if you're playing ranked, you should never go open area. Like, I know everybody likes to go open area if they win two defenses on bank. But Tellers is so much smaller, so much easier to hold. And it's just, I don't know. It's just overall a better site, in my opinion. If you're going open area because you see other people go open area, don't because you're probably just going to lose it. Open area is a very strat heavy, very, like, you have to think about what you're doing type of site. And Tellers is just so much easier. It's more intuitive. Like, it just makes sense. With that being said, I'm going to focus up for this round. I don't see anything lobby. Now, I shoot at this window every time. Just so if they're on a lobby repel, I can hear them through that window. Um, I'm just going to just, just patiently wait. My job is to deny the lobby side push that I do. Um, Because once they walk up the stairs, it's over. They, they have free entry into sites through these windows, this door, this double door. No, I hear somebody on lobby now. I'm assuming he's on the far left window just based off the audio. And yeah, he is. We get our picks. It's now a 5v1. There we go. This is what I mean. It's a very defender map. It's hard to get in. Um, and yeah, we, we luckily we had a clash just walking down to Monty as the last one. Not much that guy can do as Montaigne. If you did not know, Clash is 100% a Monty hard counter. Um... When Monty's being zapped, full deployed, or even like, I don't even know, maybe even when he's half deployed, Monty is so much slower than Clash, so Monty cannot catch up to a Clash that's backing up. Now, even when Clash is recharging her things, Clash slows down Monty so much that she can like recharge it and then just keep zapping. So if you're ever getting dogged on by a Monty main, Clash is always a good pick. Orcs is not a good pick. I hate, I hate when people go orcs against shields it does not work it's orcs is only good against shields in 1v1 situations like only good against shields in 1v1 situations the only reason that orcs is good against shields is because he can knock them over but if he knocks them over he's still vulnerable for a little bit while he's sprinting and while he's hitting the shield so if monty or split or whoever is playing the shield has a teammate behind him there's nothing that uh that orcs can do when they're mid dash animation so if you're playing uh if you're playing orcs you try to counter a shield player you really have to think about your orcs timing it's much much harder than people think it's not as easy um and honestly it's not really worth it to bring in orcs in my opinion 
just to counter shield players. If you're really struggling, truly struggling against shield players, bring a clash shield. It's so much easier. So now my clash is going to come try to help me in garage, but honestly, I, I don't think they're going to push this out. I don't hear anything on this default camera outside. They haven't even tried to shoot it. So I think I think that means uh, we're good. Oh, I'm going to knife the clash in a second try to tell him. Hey, go back to site side because it looks like the push is definitely coming site side. Clash gets spotted in garage. Not ideal. But he can get out. I'm gonna come play this setup. Alright, we have two dead side sides, so I definitely need to play this setup now. And this setup is really strong because even if they drop the hatches, I can kill them. If they go for this plant over in this corner, I can kill him. And the only thing I can't really see is if they plant on the bomb. But I really need my teammates to just nitro that if they plant on the bomb, and it looks like we're just getting straight up over on. Unfortunately, I do not think that this is a round we can win. Yeah, they just have a Monty on the door. I don't really think there's anything we can do. Oh my god. That's unfortunate. That is really unfortunate. You know, I try to rip down the door. I try to help my my clash. But I, honestly, I should have just kept playing the headholes, playing for picks. Um, maybe made a rotate on the soft wall. But it was just kind of unfortunate. You should you should never castle that door that we had castled. It is just not a good idea. Um, but also, it doesn't help that our teammates with nitro cells were the first people to die. If you have the nitro cell on this site, you need to stay alive. You need to nitro the planters because that is the main attacking push on the site. No matter if they get the hatches or if they go for a straight up blue take, everybody tries to plant on the site. They try to force a plant, right? If you have a nitro cell, you will get at least one kill guaranteed every single time if you just use it correctly. You just sit there, you hold it out, pre repped hold it for the whole round the second you hear them start to plant the just throw it they're gonna have no idea because you pre-ripped it you'll get free kills but anyways that round um that round was rough but that was a good attack to take from them it wasn't i wouldn't say that was like on us like we didn't we didn't throw that round it was more so them playing good they had a good day ideally my teammates would not have gotten picked off early but Hey, what can you do? You're solo queue. It is what it is. I'm gonna go for the same setup because, like I said, this is very effective, very strong. And we're just gonna hope that um, we stay alive sight side so that I can play uh, the setup longer. And yeah, should be fun. Same thing, I'm just gonna hold garage early round because the only way I can get killed is from my back. Um, and as long as I don't have to worry about my back i just work watch my front side it should be a pretty easy take pretty easy win for my team we get first pick which is huge and i think i'm not sure but that i'm pretty sure that was their monty player he might have been sprinting trying to get the site a little bit quicker it looks like we kitted the back side um vault the vault uh hatch which i agree with because like i said if they drop site hatch here i'm just gonna kill them anyways right so if they drop back hatch that's way more risky, way more scary. Now my teammates are holding them out of blue, so they might rotate the push, so I have to be aware about Garage. And I'm going to just cycle all the rest of the cams. Pop Square is broken, so they might still end up going blue, just through the staircase. Lobby is still closed. Just going to keep cycling. It sounds like they're going to trying to get hatches, maybe, or maybe the EMP clash, I'm not sure. But in any case, we have this on lock. 5v3 with a minute 40 on the clock. This should be pretty, pretty good. All right, I see Monty going blue side, which means the push is probably coming from blue, or the majority of the time. So I'm going to just turn my focus back, get off cams, and help my teammates. I can hear one coming main stairs. So I'm going to shoot this out just for extra time, please. 
teammate kills the main stairs player. You reinforce the hatch, which I don't like. I really don't think you should reinforce that hatch ever. And this guy's going for the forward right there. And I'm going to do something stupid. I can hear him. He's above me. I think he's going to try to drop this. Currently punching my class. He's on my class, still. I'm really tempted to climb this ladder, but I do not want to throw. Okay, there you go. But yeah, so that was, wait, yeah, it's risky. I'm outside, but I know he's focused on my class, right? And when you're falling down, it's really, really hard to shoot people because you have to constantly look up while trying to control your recoil. It's just really hard to do. So if I'm right there, I can kill him be, be like mid air, right? But he can't really shoot me. So I was pretty safe, even though he knows where I am. I know it, pretty much where he's going to be. He's going to drop from the hatch. So I felt pretty confident there that even if he dropped, I would win the gunfight. But yeah, that is going to be it for episode 12, I believe. Yeah. And see y'all in episode 13. Here's my end of episode 12 stats.